Hi guys, in this video we are going to talk about Cox proportional hazard model. The main idea is to model the hazard or risk function as a regression that depends on some function of the covariates. And so a Cox model will answer is a certain covariate or predictor increases the risk or decreases the risk of an event. An alternative to Cox models is accelerated failure time or AFT models, which models the actual time to event. But I will discuss this in a future video. The proportional hazard model assumes that the hazard is modeled by two functions, a baseline hazard function, H0, which does not depend on the covariates, and another function, which does not depend on time. So there are models which allow for time-dependent covariates, but I won't get into them in this video. The model is called proportional because the hazard ratio between different subjects is a time-independent constant, because the time-dependent factor cancels out. For example, if we have a single binary covariate, the risk of subject J is proportional to that of I by this factor, meaning that subject J has this times more or less risk than subject I. The time-independent function that Cox chose is the exponential function. So the proportional model looks like this. This model is considered semi-parametric. This is because we don't pose any parametric model on H0. In fact, for inference sake, we don't even care about H0. We do care about it eventually if we wish to do predictions because without it, we don't have a complete distribution. Nonetheless, even without H0, we can still estimate the coefficients by trying to maximize a quantity called the partial likelihood. Once we've estimated the regression coefficients, we can also estimate the baseline hazard, for example, by using the Breslow estimator. I will discuss this in a separate video. The partial likelihood is defined to be this quantity. We go over each event and take this quantity in the numerator for disease of the subject who actually experienced the event and divide by the sum of all the subjects still at the risk set at the time of the event. That is, all the subjects who still did not experience an event or a sensor. Then we take the product of this over the whole set of events. Now, why don't we use the full likelihood? Well, we saw in a previous video that the full likelihood is equal to this. Remember that the density and the survival are functions of the hazard. Since we don't have H0, we don't have the full hazard, and hence we don't have these functions. Also, a few more things to notice is that the quantity we maximize doesn't depend on the actual event times, only their order. And also notice that if this is the quantity that we are going to maximize, any intercept term will be canceled. Another way to view this is to think of the intercept as being swallowed by the baseline function. We will discuss the partial likelihood more in the next video. But for now, let's take it as a given. We can optimize the partial likelihood as our objective with regards to the betas, either using a first order method like gradient descent or a second order method like newton raphson If we treat the partial likelihood like a regular likelihood, we can also get confidence intervals and p-values for the betas. This has been shown to be legit as the number of events goes to infinity, that is, our MLE estimator is normally distributed with the true parameter as its mean. Here is a mathematical derivation. Given that this is the partial likelihood, the log partial likelihood is thus equal to this. The gradient is thus equal to this, remembering that zi is a vector. The kl element in the Hessian is equal to this, where z of jk is the kth element of zj, and nabla k is the kth element of the gradient. Now, how do we interpret the result that we got? Well, if beta is positive, it means that the associate covariate increases the risk, meaning that the survival probability is lower, and vice versa. The exact factor by which the risk is multiplied is exponent of beta. For example, suppose we have an event being experiencing a heart attack. If the beta of smoking is 1.37, then smoking increases the risk of a heart attack by e to the power of 1.37, which is equal to 3.9, meaning that a smoker has almost four times the risk of having a heart attack than non-smoker. Similarly, if the beta for exercise is minus 0.9, then someone who exercises has less than half the risk of heart attack than someone who doesn't. Note that the precise effect of the actual survival time depends also on H0, and so we cannot say that if the risk is halved, the lifespan doubles. Finally, Cox proportional hazard models don't assume any parametric form on H0, but what happens if we do? Well, if we assume that H0 is constant, 
we get the exponential distribution, that is an exponential regression. And if we assume that h0 is the power function, we get the Weibull distribution or Weibull regression. You can pause the video and have a closer look at the mathematical details. Well, that's all for this video. Hope you found it useful and see you in the next one.